Hello everybody, my name is Marie Soleil and I'm a PhD student in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of British Columbia. I am also the Community Events Coordinator with Let's Talk Science at UBC as well. One of my favorite things to learn about in school is chemistry, especially when I get to perform an experiment. Speaking of experiments, one of my favorites is the baking soda and vinegar volcano. Many of you have probably heard about or even tried this experiment, but today we're going to take it one step further. Have you ever heard about a limiting reagent? Let's break it down using a car as an example. A car needs four wheels and one body. If you're making a bunch of cars, the limiting reagent will be the material you run out of first and is often considered the most crucial part to any reaction because it determines how many times the reaction can happen. So, if you had 14 wheels and four bodies, how many cars could you make? What do you have left over? Could you build more cars if I gave you more wheels? So, what's the limiting reagent here? The answer is, you can make three cars and you would have two wheels left over. And adding extra wheels wouldn't help, meaning that this limiting reagent was the car body in this car making. Now, taking what we know about limiting reagents, we are going to use a simple experiment combining baking soda and vinegar. Baking soda and vinegar react with each other because of an acid-base reaction. Baking soda is a bicarbonate, or a base, and vinegar is acetic acid, or an acid. One of the products that this reaction creates is carbon dioxide, and we're going to figure out how much carbon dioxide it's going to make. So, does it matter how much vinegar or how much baking soda we add to the reaction? Let's find out! First, for those of you trying this at home, we have to ask an adult for permission and for help. Here's what you'll need. At least a quarter cup of baking soda, two cups of vinegar, five bottles, five balloons, a funnel or a paper to make a funnel, a one-third cup measuring cup, and a quarter teaspoon measuring spoon. Now comes my favorite part, measuring. We need equal amounts of vinegar in each bottle, so we'll pour a third cup in each. And perfect. Here are all my bottles. To each balloon, we'll add varying amounts of baking soda, starting with one quarter teaspoons and doubling that amount for each bottle, ending with one quarter teaspoons in the fifth bottle. Now we have all the balloons filled with the corresponding amount of baking soda. Here's the tough part. We have to place the balloon on the bottle, but we have to make sure that no baking soda gets out because we don't want the reaction to start early. Are we ready? Let's go. Now it's time for the fun. Looking at the balloons, we can see that the more baking soda you add to the vinegar in the container, the larger the balloon or the more carbon dioxide that is produced, as we see in bottle number five. The first and smallest balloon here had the least amount of baking soda added. So in this reaction, the limiting reagent was the baking soda. In the fifth balloon here, where we added the most baking soda, we can actually see that there's still baking soda in the bottle and there will be, even after it continues to react. This is because the vinegar ran out before the baking soda did, meaning that the vinegar is the limiting reagent in this container. 
I hope you were able to learn something from this fun at-home experiment. I want to say a big thank you to Girls in STEAM for organizing this event, and we at Let's Talk Science can't wait to see you again.